Guys, welcome to game two between wizard and ball. Bottom right hand corner, we have wow, it's going to be blue versus blue, and I can't do anything about that. Apologies. Bottom right hand corner, we have wizard as the light blue Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have ball as the dark blue Protoss. Feels appropriate. This looks like Vermeer, just bait. Yeah, it's going to be Vermeer. So, ball, I like the creativity. Game one, I like the taking the shots, but didn't pay off. This is a side thing for YouTube land. I do have Twitch out there i have not i don't know what to do for channel redeems because i don't know that i want stuff flaring up on screen for the youtube cast i like keeping them pretty clean so if you guys have any ideas for channel redeems otherwise i might just turn channel points off or some ideas from like for like other my there's a lot of improvements i could do it's not for lack of desire it's for lack of uh time commitment and a lot of other demands on my time and effort we are seeing an overlord first here from wizard i also do want to give a shout out to uh, people out in Chatland, and also highlight some previous graduates that made it up to, from Hasu League and Chobo League and whatever, that made it to the higher leagues. We saw Zeti this last season getting all the way up into Pro League. Uh, Exit w made it up into the Pro League last season. I'm hoping to see more of that sort of action. Looks like we're seeing an overpool opener here from Wizard, by the way. But I love seeing the guys that started off Getting up to Gosu League, getting up to uh, the the higher leagues. What I should have looked at is uh, season 15 to see who graduated out that direction. Let's see if we're going to see a Forge first opener once again, or maybe even a. It looks like we are seeing a Forge opener once again. I have a feeling Ball this time probably not going to go for that Reaver play. Does he see the Overlord? I think he sees that Overlord and therefore knows to do the continuation scout. Maybe. Okay, Ugh, maybe not, maybe not. But let's see if he still continues that scouting pattern. Oh, no, played himself. And he didn't see the drone making its way across. This is bad luck for, okay, there he saw the drone and is making, that's unfortunate. Okay, now sees that overlord across that edge. Almost played himself right there. So did the clever move to check the six o'clock to try to find that overlord, but just about missed it. And therefore potentially missed the scout. So now gonna be able to wander in, is gonna in fact see that spawning pool. He does have that con uh, that cannon being constructed on the front to provide that defense. The drone doing some damage. Let's see if we do just see the two Zerglings rather than four being constructed here from Wizard. Never mind, he does have four out on the map to provide a little bit of a threat, but I don't think he's going to do much more else than this. Pro blocking that edge, the drone making its way back home. A little bit battle damaged to tell stories to his other friends. And a quick... Drone out to that 3 o'clock location and maybe go to fast 3 bases. Ball does have this probe hovering out on the edge corner. Let's see if these Zerglings make their way back and engage it. So, and I actually want to see him bury that a little bit deeper to go for a follow-up scout. Extractor being built. And Hatchery there at the 3rd. So, I think this is going to be potentially 3 Hatch Mutalisk again into that 4 Hatch style of play for Wizard because he's He's getting that gas fairly quick. Did get that hatchery in the midst there. Uh, get out there, probe. He's going to be able to come back, at least see that gas timing. Should be able to see, let's see if he stays live and is able to confirm the location of that third hatchery and to get a good look at the drone saturation as well. Cybernetic score being built along that edge. No pylon yet, however, in the main. So I assume we're going to see a Stargate. Well, maybe. I assume we might see a Stargate at the natural expansion, the way this is lining up. Zealot to go ahead and plug that edge. Mutation to layer, about halfway complete. That probe, I believe, has spotted. Well, maybe not. So wandered up there, doesn't see creep. Is going to make his way across. Here should see. So now knows that there's three bases in location. The Overlord making its way a little bit too far forward, but is critically able to see the lack of Zealots on the front. Which I think should be suspected, being that it was a forge opener. But that also lets him know that he's not going up against some off-timing zealot attack. Settle of Adun being dropped with that Stargate does open up the possibility either for plus one zealot leg speed, for either, uh, if we'll see if there's some additional gateways alongside this, or if we're going to see maybe a DT follow-up. We'll have to see whether additional gateways get dropped. Probe making its way back, trying to get back to that natural expansion to go ahead and get a look, but explodes on that edge. We do have seven drones here, three drones here, but we already know that this was a tech to lair. 
spire being constructed as well. That's actually kind of a clever thing to do as a Zerg player is where you can just leave your drone saturation at 7 and 3 at these bases just to keep it a little bit ambiguous as far as just the flat drone construction to maybe force some cannons out. Ball is, well, look, I was looking for a cannon to get dropped there. Going to go for plus one weapons instead. Going to see if he goes for some preventative cannons. It's out leg speed. And the initial Corsair in construction, yeah, putting down our preventative cannon on the front just in case there is some of that early hydralist pressure. We did see Wizard, and I don't know that that's going to be a, a costume because we did see Wizard try to go for more of that hydralist contain mid-game style. Fourth hatchery now on the front. Actually, well before the Spire's even finished, additional Zerglings taking the field. Corsair wandering out. These are very exposed overlords, actually. If two Corsair make their way, I think they can, yeah. Can go ahead, and especially not seeing any Hydralis making his way across, he has to assume that it's air. So one Overlord down, putting Wizard in the red. Might even get the second one with a little bit of help. Because, so that was just before. So the Scourge is going to be able to construct. But this is going to be a little bit of a race. Does this second Corsair go up to help, or is it just going to stay back? It looks like it's going to stay back. Stream of Zerglings all of a sudden towards the natural. We do have three zealots and a couple cannons out on the front. St uh, the second overlord was taken out. The Corsair needs to be wary. Okay, is going to be able to make its way back against that scourge. And I'm wondering if it's going to peek its way and see those zerglings out on the front. Wants to cap and I guess play a little bit of control just in case of the zealot turnaround. Let's see if the scourge make their way in to go ahead and scout. A bunch of gateways being dropped behind this. We do have a Templar Archives as well, however, Zelt Leg Speed now online. But with only five Zealots, oh, Corsair gets picked off there. With only five Zealots on the, or sorry, four Zealots out on the front, it's not going to be much of an attack force, particularly without plus one weapons with all of the Zerglings setting out there. So map control in Wizard's favor. He's a little bit behind economically, but he does have a lot of bases. Now making his way to five Hatch Hydralis, getting the Hydralis Speed plus one weapons on there. And I'm expecting to see something very similar that we saw game one, which is the Hydralisk map control uh, bus, second forge being dropped. So it looks like it is going to be a heavy infantry play in the follow-up mid game for ball is also developing side storm behind this plus one weapons just about to finish. So wants to go for a potential army sweep. Zer Ooh, Zergen is getting spotted an overlord nowhere nearby. So that is going to be a lot of Zergling kills for free. We do have Overlords bunched up there at the 3 o'clock. Overlord coverage there. No Overlord. Oh, it looks like an Overlord exiting the main. Speed is being upgraded. The Zergling's now scattering otherwise. A couple Scourge nearby just in case Corsair decided to, or a shuttle wandered that direction. And yeah, we're going to see, oof, going to be a lot of gateways. So what I said before with the three gateways, it's going to be, you know, High Templar or whatever. This is going to be a lot more troop production. Ball already has the supply lead at this stage. A decent worker lead, but he's saturated on fewer bases. And I think Wizard is, was thinking of following this up with potential a Hydralisk Surge uh, and Contain. I assume once the upgrades are in place, and he's maybe in for a rude surprise, as he's going to be greeted by a good amount of Psy Storm and a huge Zealot army. So he actually needs to be careful with his troop count, actually needs to preserve a lot of the troops on the front as Ball surging way ahead in that troop count lead. Plus, there's going to be a massive upgrade advantage, particularly if Ball's patient with it and waits for plus two weapons and plus one armor to finish. And that is going to be an even larger supply lead as far as a follow-up. Let's see if he gets that robotics facility. Yeah, he's got it, that robotics facility. I think well ahead of Lurker Tech. Yeah, Lurker is just now being upgraded. Dark Templar patrolling this location. Just want to get a peek at it. No, don't dive! Sees things, costs his life, but got a little bit of information at the very least. 20 supply lead for Ball, which is actually more sizable than it seems because you've got five high Templar in the grouping with this. Sorry about that. There's my taskbar. Uh, actually, I've made the, everything black for a second there. Apologies, everybody. I haven't done that in a very long time. Bunch of goons to deal with any lurkers to follow up. And yeah, I think Ball's going to have a pretty solid timing here as Wizard actually looking to go ahead and grab an additional base and maybe expand. Bunch of Overlords floating forward, expecting maybe some additional follow-up DTs. 
Lurker tech being upgraded. Single Zergling marching out to at least see some Zealots flooding their way. But I like what Ball's doing here. He's not revealing everything. He's only moving the initial Zealots forward. It's going to take an Overlord to scout what's behind this. So might not have an idea of how large an army he's up against until it's potentially too late. He actually has an overall worker lead. If he grabs this fourth base and saturates it, he'll have a considerable worker lead. Wizard is going to... Especially if he just allows... Looks like the egg's being cleared out. Especially if he allows this army to just march towards his natural expansion and he eats Psystorm at a battle location at his natural expansion, this could be devastating for Wizard. But I'm curious if Ball is going to try to slow play this and just go ahead and grab his third. I assume not, though. Just looking at this sheer volume of gateways, this looks like I'm going, as soon as I have that Observer out, I'm going to push into you and go for a game-ending maneuver which is with overwhelming size. So now, the troops gathering up. I wonder if this Corsair actually could probably lead the way and provide a little bit of scouting information along that. 20 supply lead for Ball, plus one armor landing, plus two weapons finishing, and I assume that's going to be the go moment. We're going to start to see that A move across the map. Wizard, unfortunately, making his way forward into this attack force, which particularly if he doesn't stage this well, could be running into his own doom. Oof, the Observer out of position does get some free damage on some of those Zealots. The Observer needs to swing forward with those Dragoons to engage this. A lot of Hydralists waiting to the north. Fourth base now up for Wizard, but a 40 supply lead for Ball. If he concentrates this attack and engages it well, he'll be okay. If Wizard's able to snipe the Observers, that will be huge. Ball, rather than engaging to the north, or sorry, engaging to the east is moving across to the south. Psy Storms across that location did lose an observer in that grouping, but he does have this army with an observer to the north. The Hydralists engaging a bit piecemeal. They need to be careful. Right now, Wizard making, well, first of all, in the red in these skirmishes, but making sure that his opponent didn't sneak out because he is was thinking about a contain, eating a Psy Storm right there at the natural, moving in with his lurkers. And this is disastrous for Wizard because he's potentially allowing his units to be captured in a flank if Ball closes in with his troops to the north, at which point he'll be he'll have those troops wiped out. However, maybe doesn't realize the size of this attack force to the north, but right now, all of a sudden, has Ball locked into two bases. Ball is not going to bother with that natural expansion. Is just going to grab all of his attack forces and engage, it looks like, at the 3 o'clock location. Wizard feeling like he's successfully sealed the contain. I don't think he realizes the size of this army back here. He's going to have to back out and unload immediately. And Wizard, yeah, making his way all the way to the natural. Going to find some lurkers just morphing. And again, with the sizable upgrade advantage, the Observer overhead, no Overlord in space. Let's see if these back up and retreat. It looks like some of the lurkers going to hold, but this army getting wiped out from Wizard on the front. And now turning around and engaging that natural expansion with just a skeleton crew of Hydralisks. The rest of the Lurkers are going to hold on that front. A follow-up Observer should be sufficient to go ahead and clear that out. Ball does need to engage with the rest of this army, though, uh, to cap this. It looks like reinforcements coming from that natural. So actually, I take that back. Uh, wisely leaving some of these reinforcements to the rear so we can do the damage on the front, mix it up with the natural expansion, and engage the troops as they're coming from the opposite location, moving out with a follow-up observer to clear the lurkers off his front. So with the huge supply lead, the drone's now fleeing up to that third. The natural expansion's certainly going to get decimated. The Hydralis then getting crushed. Looks like a handful of troops have been drawn to the north, so that might be it for this attack force. But the damage has been really wrought. They're... Actually, you take it back. Not a lot of drones have been picked off by this. Follow-up attacks making their way out. So if Wizard can somehow do some miracle drone cycles, or sorry, miracle attack cycles, maybe you could clear this out because there's not a lot of troops left. Some reinforcements making their way across. Ball needs to take, he has taken a hatchery out, needs to continue with this pressure because at this moment it's do or die. Otherwise, he's just going to end up economically swarmed. Wizard continuing to build, build piecemeal troops. I want to see some more zealots mixed up to this because right now it's Dragoons versus Zerglings. 
they're being cleared out a little bit by that side storm. Oh, that observer almost taken out, which could have been a self-sabotaging move right there on Ball's part. Natural expansion exposed to the Zealots and the Dragoons. Lurker on the ramp cleared out. More reinforcements making their way across in the form of Dragoon. Zerglings trying to sweep in. A single Zealot trying to hold the line. Worker counts even, but again, just more bases out there for Wizard. Natural expansion finally gets wiped out. Level 2 armor now online for Ball as he walks into the natural expansion, into the main. Sorry, and that Spire potentially, the spawning pool, everything else. It looks like Hive Tech is up behind this. He's going to need to build a lot of units in a hurry. Let's, it doesn't look like he's remorphing anything at any additional expansion, so just going to call GG right there. Had a lot of money in the bank, but just wasn't able to get the larva spent too much for ball. Well played. Going to move on to game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.